Hello everyone, back tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. For today's video, uh, which takes around 28th of April. So we're getting towards the end of the month now with week to 10 day video updates. The uh, year really is rolling on now, uh, 2019. Um, so we'll have a look at that. We're going to uh, start off with what's going on in the stratosphere. Latest stratospheric developments. Probably will be the last time we look at that for this season because it appears that the polar vortex is about done now. And uh, we're moving on into the sort of uh, late spring, early summer season, which is where the uh, PV pretty much goes away over the North Pole for a few months anyway. So we'll have a look at that. We'll also look at Beijing Climate Centre today uh, for the next 40 days. So we're going to start off, though, with competition. We have got over 170 entrants now. A uh, huge thank you to all of you for uh, entering our competition. We're teaming up with metcheck.co.uk weather instrumentation. We're giving away the Climax CM9088 uh, temperature and humidity forecast station. It's worth £50. It's a fantastic prize. It will tell you the uh, indoor and outdoor temperature, humidity, pressure, sunrise, sunset, and moon phases. So it's a wonderful prize. And if you'd like to be in with a chance of winning this, then all you need to do is send your name and uh, local, sort of regional town, city, area to Gals, whether it's at gmail.com, email it to us. You'll be put into the prize draw. And on Sunday, on Easter Sunday, somebody is going to win this. So you've got to be in it to win it. Got 170 entrants uh, over now. But uh, we're going to keep plugging away at this through to Sunday. I mean, on Sunday, somebody will win the climate temperature and humidity forecast. I say it's worth £50. It's a wonderful prize. Uh, everybody else will get an exclusive 15% off discount code that I will give you on Sunday. Uh, and that uh, applies not only to this uh, item, the climate humidity forecast age, if you'd like to buy that, uh, then you'll be able to use your 15% off discount code at metcheck.co.uk. But it'll apply to any other Metcheck uh, product as well. So, as I say, everyone's a winner with this one. You have 15% off if you're a runner-up. Uh, and also, of course, somebody's going to win uh, this prize on Sunday. So, Get emailing and we'll put you in the bag. And uh, as I say, got to be in it to win it. So thanks so much to everybody for doing that. Right, let's get on uh, with the uh, update. Then we're going to start off with the latest situation in the stratosphere. So this is from the JMA. This is showing us the temperature at 10 HPA right now and through the season going back to uh, September. So the grey line is a trend line. You can see we're on an upwards trade now uh, on average at this time of the year as the temperature warms up in the stratosphere and also on the surface, of course, you lose those cold temperatures over North Pole. And uh, we go through into the uh, into the spring and summer season. The black line shows how temperatures have been performing through this season. So we have a sudden stratospheric warming around Christmas and New Year, followed by the very cold temperature at 10 HPA, almost record-breakingly cold, down to minus 80 through February and into uh, March. As we've gone into April, we've seen a recovery of the temperature. And finally, 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 we are a little bit above average uh, with the temperature at 10 HPA. The black line has lifted up to around minus 40 which actually takes us slightly above the uh, long-term trend. So you can quite clearly see there that temperatures have lifted up. We have finally lost those very cold temperatures that we had through February and March over the North Pole in the stratosphere at 10 HPA. Going a little bit lower down to 30 HPA, it's a similar story. It's taken a little bit long to lift the temperature up at 30 HPA, but now we are pretty much back to trend. We're pretty much back to that grey line. So again, temperatures are lifting up and uh, we are losing those cold temperatures at 10 HPA. We are losing, therefore, the polar vortex. The polar vortex is pretty much done now for this season. It will come back uh, as we get through into the end of the summer. The only part of the autumn, the polar vortex will reform. But for now, the polar vortex is uh, a dying sort of entity. 
These are how temperatures are forecast to develop over the North Pole at 10 HPA on the latest GFS run at Mitchell.fr. So uh, the blue colours over sort of northern Europe, um, still relatively cold temperatures at 10 HPA there. Over the North Pole, temperatures are lifting up with those green and yellow colours. Let's run you through and you can see what's going to happen. So overall, we just see a further weakening, really, of those blue colours. They're going away. Green and yellow colours dominating. Not just across the North Pole, across most of uh, sort of the Northern Hemisphere, really. Uh, let's just quickly give that a, a, a refresh. And uh, again, we just run through. You can see that those green uh, and yellow colours are persisting there over the North Pole and over the Northern Hemisphere as well. Which tells us, again, we're losing those cold temperatures as we go into the uh, sort of uh, Northern Hemisphere summer. Um, and we're losing the polar vortex. Polar vortex is increasingly losing its influence as well. This is from weatheriscool.com. It's depicting the uh, zonal winds uh, at 10 HPA. So this is kind of like the strength, if you like, of the polar vortex. Um, I, I lots of different coloured lines. I haven't got time to go through all of them. The main ones are the black line, which is the train line. So you can see that we're on a downwards train now with the uh, with the zona wings, strength of the zona wings. They're trending downwards all the time now through to the summer. Uh, so at the same time as the um, temperature at 10 HPA is trending up, so the zonal wings, uh, the surface zonal wings are trending downwards. So obviously you, it tells you that there's that relationship between the warm stratosphere at 10 HPA or a, a warming stratosphere at 10 HPA and a weakening uh, zonal wind. The blue line shows how temperature, how um, the zonal winds have been developing through this season. So we had a reversal of the zonal winds around New Year when we had that sudden stratospheric warming. After that, though, the zonal winds really took off, went very, very strong, record-breaking strong zonal winds as we went into March. Uh, at the same time, we had that extremely cold stratospheric temperature down to minus 18 at 10 HPA. So the cold temperatures, those severely cold temperatures, minus 80, 10 HPA, driving the zonal winds into a frenzy, into a very, very strong uh, state indeed. Since then, the zonal winds have been trending downwards. You can see the blue line moving down very gradually. And this is where we are right now. Uh, with the zonal winds uh, just there. So still the zonal winds are ever so slightly stronger than average, ever slightly above that black line, above the uh, long-term trend. However, the green lines of the GFS ensembles, you can see they are forecasting the zonal winds to go into reverse very shortly. So we're going to see the zonal winds dropping out. They're going to go into reverse. At the same time, the temperature is lifting up. And again, this is all just telling us that we are coming to the end of the polar vortex season for the 2018-19 uh, winter season. The polar vortex is, uh, is a dying entity, as it always is at this time of year. And you can see uh, then the forecast from the long-range CFSV2 uh, with these three pink and one blue line. Uh, blue line is to keep the um, zona wings into reverse through the summer. That's July, for example, uh, just there. So I think that's pretty much the last time we'll be looking at stratospheric temperatures for this season. There's not really going to be much else to look at now till we get through to around August. Um, around August, September, that's when the polar vortex will begin to re reform as the temperature starts to drop again over the North Pole. Days get longer, of course. Um, so we'll pick up with the what's happening in the stratosphere as we get through to the end of the summer and into the yard. But for now, I think that's pretty much it. Don't think there'll be much point in looking at that uh, for the next few months. Right, so let's get on with weather for next week, 10 days then. Uh, these are the 500 millibar high dominant flow charts from Penn State University. We've got the ECMWF here on the top and the GFS is on the bottom. Have a look around in a moment. 500 millibar, same as these is area in the atmosphere where high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream running above. Red and orange extrapolates to high pressure. Blue will be extrapolating to uh, low pressure. These are the mean flow charts for the 7 to 10 day time frame. will take us to around 18th, uh, 28th I should say, as it's 18th today, and <laughs> take us to around the 28th of April. 
So you can see within the week's 10 day time frame, we've got this area of above average heights sitting over and to the east of the country, below average heights so to the west and to the south. And that's going to be bringing up the air from a southerly type direction or southeasterly type direction anyway. So it implies that in the next 10 days, there's going to be a lot of anticyclonic influences, a lot of high pressure dominance. And therefore, with winds from the southeast, it's also likely to be quite warm. So generally warm, dry conditions persisting. Uh, in the week to 10 day time frame and the GFS is very similar look at this big area of above average heights to the north and also over the UK and stretching down to our south as well below average heights are in the middle of the Atlantic the flow of the jet is going to be going something a bit like that so again we close that big area of high pressure we're dominated by high pressure in the week to 10 day time frame Winds will be coming up from a southerly southeast direction. Again, lots of dry and warm weather on offer uh, with that one. GFS uh, upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go to the week. So we're at Dover today. Someone's asked me to have a look at Dover. So the red line here is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Dover. And you can see we're warmer than average right now, and we're going to be staying warmer than average, certainly going through to the latter part of April. That's the sort of final days of April, 30th of April, is just there. And generally, solidly above average, really, as we go through towards month 10. There is a little bit of scatter in there. Some of these ensemble members are dropping uh, away down here, going a bit cooler. But the broad majority uh, of these uh, ensembles are keeping temperatures, upper air temperatures, above average through towards month's end now. As we get through to the very last day or so of April into the beginning of May, that's the first week of May, just there, of course, we are seeing a drop in the temperature then. But I have to re-emphasise, keep re-emphasising, this is extended range stuff, so you'll always get uh, scattered within the GFS ensembles in the extended range. That's extended range stuff, and it is in the unreliable time frame. Precipitation wise, certainly for the next week from the 18th to around the 24th, 25th of April, it looks pretty much universally dry. Beyond that, in the final days of April and into early May, there are more precipitation spikes appearing. So it looks like it's turning more unsettled. But again, this change, the unsettled weather keeps being put back. So we have to wonder whether we will ever get into an unsettled uh, spell of weather this side of the end of April. Uh, now it looks like the change to unsettled conditions is sort of penciled in within the GFS ensembles for around the 25th, 26th of April. But again, this is being pushed back all the time, so we just need to wait and see. Certainly the next week looks like it's going to be largely warm and dry uh, for a lot of the country. Temperature anomalies reflect this. This is the temperature anomaly from the 18th to 26th of April, and it's above average for the UK and Ireland. In fact, it's above average for much of uh, Central and Northern Europe as well, a solidly warmer than average week coming up. And very dry too. Precipitation anomalies from the 18th to 26th of April, significantly drier than average. So the warm, dry spell uh, goes on. <coughs> Excuse me, this is how uh, GFS is looking for Sunday, for Easter Sunday. High pressure is dominating the weather, sitting over and just to the east of the country as well, bringing in these uh, very warm, southerly, southeasterly type winds. Free to Easter Monday, the high pressure holds on. Low pressure is developing out in the Atlantic, it's putting the high pressure under pressure. But this low pressure is actually slipping away to our south, so it's the high to our east that is winning uh, the battle with that one. Three to the middle of next week, still a lot of anticyclonic influences going on. And into the second half of next week, if anything, the high pressure looks like it's re-strengthening, really, uh, to our east and northeast. There is low pressure to the south, so that will be bringing heavy showers, maybe thunderstorms to parts of the Bay of Biscay. And down to Spain and Portugal. That low pressure is trying to push northwards, but it is being held off, it's, it's being fended off by the high pressure sitting over and to the east of the UK. Moving up to day 10, the battle continues really. Low pressure is covering France, Spain, and Portugal will be threatening thundery showers, maybe thunderstorms there. But for us, we're still under this ridge of high pressure. We're still pulling in the wind 
from an easterly direction. So there could be heavy showers threatening the south there on Sunday the 28th of April. That, of course, is going to be the London Marathon. Uh, day. There could be heavy showers or thunderstorms threatening the south, but really most parts of the country are still under that area of high pressure even at day 10. In more extended range, we keep high pressure going. Its uh, position is sitting just to our west now as we go into the end of the month. So we're putting down some cooler air uh, around the top of this high pressure from a north or northeast direction. But the main thing is that dry weather continues uh, right way into the start of May. That's as far as we can go to Saturday the 4th of May and the high pressure is still in control just pulling out a little bit to our west maybe hinting at the chance of a northerly shot but I mean this is over two weeks away so not worth worrying about the main story from that GFS run is that high pressure uh, continues to dominate the weather the GFS parallel run looks like this so again Easter Sunday most parts of the country under high pressure could be a little bit of rain in the far northwest of Scotland, but most places are going to be dry there. That's Easter Monday. Low pressure is trying to get in from off the Atlantic, but it's being fended off by the high sitting to our east. However, the parallel does have a rather more unsettled complexion to it for next week, particularly to the south and west, where there could be some showers along the spells of rain, probably mainly dry across the northern and eastern part of the country. Moving up towards day 10, this is how things look. High pressure is building quite closely into the country. That is the chart for day 10, certainly the 28th of April. Again, quite a lot of anti-cyclonic influences, although it's not as settled as the GFS operational run uh, would be. In a more extended range would be uh, parallel GFS, that's how it looks. So we get a bit of a northern blocking uh, situation developing uh, towards Greed and Iceland as low pressure is out to uh, the west of the country. And when you go to the very end of the parallel GFS, it does turn increasingly unsettled. Uh, so we've got the parallel GFS turning things increasingly unsettled as we go towards the beginning of May, whereas the operational GFS wants to keep lots of high pressure going. What does the ECM do? We have to say, uh, well, this is the ECM for Sunday. Again, high pressure originally through the country, bringing most of us a dry and warm Easter day. Easter Monday, we're still fending off that low pressure in the Atlantic. And even into the middle of next week, low pressure generally being kept at bay out to the south and west by this high pressure sitting to our east. So it remains, for most parts of the country anyway, reasonably dry and quite warm through to the middle of next week. Heading up towards day 10, we just keep lots of high pressure going. There may be some low tr pressure troughs, possibly bringing a few showers or maybe a thundery shower to the south or west in particular. But overall, that's an anti-cyclonic signal, I think, as we get into day 10, which is Sunday, 28th of April. These are the options are on the table today within the uh, ECM ensembles from the Icelandic Met Office. These are the bogey stamps from the Icelandic Met Office for day 10, which is the 28th of April. So we've got 21 members of the ECM ensembles that have high pressure from the Atlantic and ridging into the south of the country. They've also got high pressure up to the north. Uh, low pressures out towards Greenland and Iceland and possibly a bit of energy coming in from the Atlantic. So that could bring a few showery bursts, I suppose, to north and west parts of the country. However, most places are still under high pressure, uh, even with those. And then we've got 16 that have high pressure sitting just to our east. They're bringing in mainly dry and fairly warm easterly winds. And then there's uh, 14, including the operational run. That's the run we're just looking at, of course from the ECMWF again with lots of anti-cyclonic influences really high pressure building from the Atlantic uh, through the UK to our east. Low pressure is out to uh, the northwest towards Greenland and Iceland. The jet streams going off uh, like that. So maybe just a little bit showery for the northwestern country but really I think most of those ensemble members are pointing us towards high pressure still being in control uh, at uh, day 10, 240 hours away. As we go to two weeks away, these are the options that we've got. This takes us into the start of May, 360 hours away, uh, 3rd of May. We've got 24 members of the uh, East Ensembles Ensembles with high pressure over and to the north of the country, bringing in the wind from an easy direction. So they're mainly settled, those ones. Winds are from an east or northeast direction, so probably not overly warm, 
but a lot of dry weather on offer. Then there's 15 that have high pressure out to the west of the country, pulling out to the west. Low pressure is to the east. So there are cooler snow, probably fairly dry. The Atlantic is blocked off. Maybe showers in the north and east. The main thing, though, is a drop in temperature will be taking place with those leading to what could be quite a coldish start to uh, May. And then finally, there's 12 members of the ECM ensembles looking like this. Very unsettled, much more unsettled with these 12. Low pressure, um, below average height, sitting almost over top of the country, actually, uh, bringing in those westerly, uh, southwest winds. There is a bit of a blocking signal up to the north and west as well. Um, so those ones, uh, and they include the ECM control run, in, um, interestingly, those ones very unsettled as we're going into the start of May. But that's a minority option. There's only 12 of them. I think most of the ECM ensemble members, even in two weeks' time, still want to keep a reasonable amount of high-pressure influences. Finally, just having a look at the Beijing Climate Centre. These are 500 millibar heights, and they're broken down into 10-day periods. The first 10-day period will take us from the 21st uh, through to the 30th of April, and we're anti-cyclonic. Look at that big area of above-average heights. It's sitting over top of the UK and much of Northern Europe as well. Uh, so high-pressure dominance for the rest, uh, dominates for the rest of uh, April with the Beijing Climate Centre. Uh, the next 10 day period shows a change though. This is the first through to the 10th of May. First 10 days of May sees low pressure developing out to the west. High pressure is slipping to the south and we're bringing in more of a westerly flow. So obviously that is a more unsettled situation for the first 10 days of May. It's probably not overly unsettled, but it will certainly be more unsettled than we've been used to through the second half of April. And it would bring showers and for the north and west anyway, maybe some longer spells of rain. Next 10 day period is the 11th to the 20th of May with above average heights to the south and below average heights up to the north. Um, that's setting things down. The jet stream is pushing back northwards again uh, and a lot of dry and warm weather on offer, particularly I would have thought for the southern part of the country. And then the final 10 days uh, of May, which is days 31 to 40, it's the 21st of May through to the 30th. Um, a little bit of uh, lawn blocking signal appearing there. We've got some high pressure developing towards Greenland. Uh, low pressure looks like it's developing uh, around the Azores. So the NAO there will be going negative uh, with that. For us, it's very questionable what is happening over UK, but I suspect with that kind of pattern in late May, we will probably be turning more unsettled, probably turning cooler as well. Um, but it's a long way off. It's days 31 to 40. And overall, I think the signals continue to be towards high pressure and relatively warm, uh, dry conditions continuing into May. Right, finally, if you're enjoying the content at Gasworthy's at the moment, please can you consider becoming a patron for Gasworthy. So we've got 62 patrons so far. Hello and a big, big thank you to all 62 of our patrons. Thanks so much for being patrons for Gasworthy's. And if you'd like to be a patron... The Gals Weathers, all you need to do is come to the Gals Weathers Patreon page, sign yourself up for a Patreon account, and you can pledge an ongoing monthly donation to Gals Weathers. It could be anything from $1 a month upwards. Uh, and just a huge thank you to all of our patrons. Alternatively, you can become a donor for Gals Weathers, and you do that through PayPal. So you just come to the Gals Weathers PayPal page, you sign into PayPal account, and you give a one-off donation to Gals Weathers. Um, and again, big thank you to all of our donors. Hello, big thank you to all of you. So um, whether you do this through PayPal or Patreon, you'll get a shout-out in videos. We'll say thank you very much for your kindness and generosity. Unless you would rather stay anonymous, and if so, just leave a little note either when you send your donation through PayPal or when you uh, sign up to Patreon. Leave a little note. And let us know you'd rather not have a shout out. But otherwise, we will give you uh, a mention in the videos. We're primarily ads funded and will be remaining. So there's no question about going behind paywalls or anything like that. It's just an added revenue stream because ad yields, um, the revenue we earn from advertisements, are generally in decline year by year for various reasons, such as ad blockers. 
and also the economic climate. And there's various reasons I won't go into um, why that's the case. But we don't get as much from uh, advertisements as we used to. Uh, and so we look for other revenue streams. And this has been a very, uh, very um, popular revenue stream. I've actually been very, very surprised at how popular this has been since we started it back in June. So a huge, huge thank you to uh, all of our PayPal donors and all of our patrons uh, for Gazza, which you're helping us to fund the website and keep the content online. Right, that's it for today's video. Tomorrow, it's Good Friday, of course, tomorrow, but the vids continue at Gazza Vids. So I have JMA Friday as usual. I suppose we JMA Good Friday. Um, and also, we'll have your regular week to 10-day video update as well. Loads and loads of updates coming up over the Easter weekend. I'll fill you in on those tomorrow uh, but we never stop at Gaza, it's, and the, the content will continue throughout the Easter weekend. All right, that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.